Hey everyone, my name is Chloe and today I'm here to do my January book haul revisit. So if you have not seen one of these videos, um, it's not anything that reinvents the wheel, but I am looking back to um, previous years, three years ago, and seeing if I actually haul the books that I read. So I started my channel in December of 20. 19, right? So 2020 was my first full year on booktube. And uh, I I was pretty consistent toward the latter half of the year uh, on doing ins and outs, hauls and unhauls. And um, by the end of the year, I definitely had a system going. So we're going to go back, we're going to stick with going back three years. So we're going to go to January 2021 and see if I've read the books that I hauled. So in December, I hauled like 50 something books. I wanted to say that January was smaller. Uh, I wanted to see like a smaller, okay, so if I'm going to do 50 books uh, in, in December, then I'm guessing it's going to be smaller in January, but I honestly don't think it is. I, I am really, really nervous. I'm pulling up the video now, um, and the video is, let's see, the video is almost 30 minutes long, which means there's a hefty amount that I am uh, hauling. So... I don't know what they are, but we're gonna we're gonna dive in together and find out. As always, then I will try to uh, vlog my reading of those books um, on the end here, and and you can see the ones that are unread. Hopefully, I can read them all and either get them off my shelves or move them to these. Uh, clustered already read uh books bookshelves you guys i want you to watch uh it's january 1st as i'm filming this and my husband has said that he this winter is going to build floor to ceiling shelves for me you guys stay tuned see if it happens let's see i my fingers are crossed so tight because i'm so sick of this crazy background but i don't have any more space to put things and unhauling books is hard for me so Let's get into the video, see what I'm going to be reading in January. Um, I'm doing one readathon, so my TBR is generally pretty light. So let's see. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to, um, so this might be annoying. I'm going to put the speed up to two times speed, uh, just so if I'm chitter chattering around that we are not here for 30 minutes rewatching the video, I'll have the video link down below. So um, if you want to watch the whole thing, you definitely can. But I'm going to start the video and I might even skip forward just a little bit so we can see the books, um, but not be here forever and ever. So let me start recording my screen. Okay. And as always, I have my handy dandy board here, read, unread, and uh, unhauled without reading. I'm going to try to scooch, let's see, I'm going to try to scooch way over here maybe um, so we can have room for me and the screen. We'll see. Well, let's just get into it. Okay, so starting off the haul, these first three are all ones that I have gotten from Forever and Grand Central Publishing. And so thank you, thank you, thank you to these publishers. I cannot wait to read all three of these. So the first one is Reunited on Dragonfly Lane by Annie Rains. Ooh, and this nope. one is about starting off strong. I have not read it. It convinces her to adopt this dog. He's got a broken leg. And so I think there's it's a romance between the vet and the woman. And I love vet romances. I read one probably 15 years ago. And I cannot think about what it was, but it was a series. It wasn't the Anim Animal Magnetism series by Joel Chavez, but something similar that it was about vets. And so I've been like craving one that puts me in that same spot. And so I'm hoping this might be the one. I don't know. This is a really tiny mass market paperback. Like it feels smaller than normal, but I am excited to read this. Next is Friends Like Us by Sarah McKenzie. And I'm really excited. I've read that. I'm really excited for this one too. I'm going to say that probably with every book, but it's because I am. I'm really excited. This is about a girl who, or a woman who has a cancer scare. And so then her and her best friend, um, Jill, I think is her best friend's name. I remember that because my best friend's name is also Jill. And um, so they decide to make. And this one is one that I'm reading. Okay, a mother's this, promise. I have not read. In 1927, she is like a, a teen mom. Maybe she's pregnant. And so they make her go to this like institution, and then they try to take her baby um, because she is too young to have this baby. And so then she is fighting to get her baby back. And I just love books about a mother's love and like what moms will do for their kids. And so I have high hopes for this one. So this next deck is books that I received as gifts. So Brie, um, my good friend from Falling for Romance on Instagram, I will link her um, down below. She she sent me a message one day and said, hey, I have some duplicate copies of this handful of books. Do you want them? And I said, heck yes. So she sent me The Flip Side by James Bailey. I've read it. And this one is about a guy who has like carefully planned out his life and yet his girlfriend broke up with him. He's like homeless, I think, living with his parents or something. And so he's like, okay, I'm just gonna start flipping a coin. And so that's what he does. And this is his story and how it works out for him. It's his romance. And I just think this concept is so interesting. And hopefully it will like teach me some philosophical things because I'm a planner and like to really like try to control things. But truthfully, everything is out of our control. And so I really um, hope this book does that well. Next is Written in the Stars by Alexandria. I've Buffer. read it. And this is a female female romance. Um, I think one of them, their brother's like trying to hook them up on blind dates and they keep going poorly. And so then um, it's like a, a Twitter astrologer or something. And um, it's their romance. So I've heard great things and it, it'll be my first female female um, romance. So I'm hoping I'll like it. It looks like it's set in Seattle and that sounds fun. Um, I can't wait to try it. 
the next four are all Christmas books that she sent me. And we know Brie loves her Christmas books, and so do I. And so I'm going to gladly put these on my shelf. So Jingle All the Way by Debbie McComber. I yep. am so nervous for this one, you guys, because my sister read it and did not love it. I think Brie read it and did not love it. Um, I really just have not heard great things about this, but it's Debbie. It's Christmas. I, at least for FOMO's sake, have to know what was new this year. And I've heard such I've read this one. This. I think it's a road trip romance, and I've heard people either love it or hate it. So again, FOMO, I want to know. Next is Mistletoe and Mr. Wright by Sarah Morgan. I've read it. This, I think it's the second in her um, Moose Springs, Alaska or something series. And so I asked Sarah from the book because she loves the series. And she said, you do need to read them in order. So I'll need to find the first one, which is the tourist attraction, and then read this one. And I'm really curious since Sarah loves it, if I will love it or not. I'm kind of guessing not since Sarah and I tend to not have the same taste. But I think it's I like a three I've seen an interview with Sarah Morgan Taylor and she was a really nice, fun gal. So that really helps. And like I automatically like I'm going into this thinking I'll like it. And then last from Brie is A Princess for Christmas by Jenny Holiday. I've read it. And um, I, I didn't hear as many people reading this this year as I thought, but um, it sounds interesting. I love some royal. I love some Christmas. This is set in New York. That's my favorite place to read Christmas books, so that's exciting. And then the last gift I received this month is from the wonderful Christopher from Books and Jams. She sent me The Lazy Genius Way. I love so this This book. is a book. Um, it says Embrace What Matters and Ditch What Doesn't and Get Stuff Done. And so her and I have chatted, um, and she just knows, like, this is what I need 100%. Like, I am so busy with stuff all the time. So um, a few reasons and things that I'm going to give as excuses, right? Gravity of Us. And so she was releasing these on Instagram. And so okay. I saw them and I had to have them. And I they don't are know about signed. this one. I think like, so. Yes. Oh, so good. And so sweet. And they are signed like to me. And I just have never had like a personalized sign. I book. hold the all of great. I love supporting her. And all I just them. love these books and will like cherish them. So I have these four from that. But then I also had to buy these seven that I didn't have. You guys, mm. I really only have like four of hers on my shelf because they are all on Kindle Limited. But I just decided now is the time. And so I bought all of her backlist. So we've got Loving Mr. Daniels, which I have read and loved. Yes. Southern Storms, which is the um, book club pick for the Book Sisters yes. for February, so maybe you should check this one out. Um, then the Space in Between. No. This one is like a very old school cover. I love it. Next is Art and Soul. Yes. The Wreckage of Us. Yes. And then Landon and Shay, part one and two. Yes. So I now own all of Bernice C. Terry's books. Eastern Lights, I wanted to pre-order it, but she said pre-order is not available, so I will be ordering that. That comes out the 17th, maybe, of February, so um, I just am so thrilled to have this collection. I, like, it was worth every penny. You guys know I very... Okay, so what we missed is all four of the Elements series. Um, they were, she released special copies and um, autographed personally. And so I've read all but one. So there's one unread and then um, three that I have read. So kind of missed that, but... Uh, we'll keep going. So okay. good. So this is about a marriage couple that's married and enters into marriage pact, which is like sounds almost like a little culty. It's this group of people all about like how to keep your marriage fresh and alive and safe and all that stuff, but you cannot mention the marriage pact. And one of them breaks that rule. And I don't know. This is a thriller, so I don't want to know much more. I'm so excited. Then we have Sale by James Patterson and Howard I read it. Rowan, maybe. And um, when I had said something about liking James Patterson, one of you guys said that the Guilty Wives Club or the Guilty Wives or something and Sale were your favorites. And so I saw this one and had to grab it because I want to know. I read Guilty Wives and I did enjoy it, so I'm excited to read Sale. Next is The Perfect Nanny um, by Layla Sarai. And this one is a nanny thriller, and I don't want to know any more than that. I love nanny thrillers. This one's super short. I plan to read it this month, and so um, I'm excited. Can I not say that any more times? Um, next is Someone Else's Love Story by Jocelyn Jackson. I've read so, it. Um, Karen from Other Be Reading sent me God's in Alabama, which is Jocelyn Jackson's debut, I think. And she said she thought I'd really like her. And I did like the writing style. And so this one I saw, and I grabbed it. Um, this one I think is about a woman who has like a three year old or something, and she's at a gas station when it's held up. And this man comes between like a shooter and her three year old. And so she falls in love with that man. And I think it's the romance there, but there's like more to that story. So um, Karen said she is kind of like Leanne Moriarty, where she's a mix of like women's fiction and thriller. And this plot sounds like exactly that. And I am like so excited to read this. So I have got to come up with a new word too. You actually make this into a drinking game every time I say I'm so excited. Next is Reconstructing Amelia by Kimberly McRae. So I've read, read it, loved it. And I'm kind of hit or miss on her. But this one is about a woman who was called from her um, daughter's school. And they say her daughter's in trouble for cheating, but they also, she gets there and her daughter's dead. And supposedly she jumped from the roof, roof, but she gets a note saying she didn't jump. So I think she's trying to figure out what happened. And I don't know, I'm really feeling like I'm doing a good job. Like one of my goals of 2021 was to read more thrillers. And so part of it, I guess this year means hauling them to read them, but I'm definitely doing better in um, at least hauling thrillers. So hopefully I will get that goal met. Next is An Abundance of Catherine's by John Green. And I think this is read about it. a boy who has dated a whole bunch of Catherine's and then he goes on a road trip. Um, I don't really know. This is a honor book for the Michael Prince Award. So I've heard a lot about this. Uh, John Green, I'm kind of hit or miss on him as well. Um, but this one sounded interesting enough. So I will try it. Next is The Overdue Life of Amy. Um, read Amy it and loved and it. I don't remember. Like, I've heard a lot about this book when it came out, which was a long time ago, I feel like. And I just love books about books. And so I feel like this one might fit that. Uh, fit that. And so I will give it a shot. I don't really know anything about it except for that. Next is The Roommate by Rosie Dannon. And this one is about um, a okay, guy who roommates and I think he's in the sex, industry, sex film industry. And um, I've heard like that this does really good things for that industry and just um, kind of normalizing it maybe. So I don't know. I, again, have like FOMO about this book. Uh, and speaking of FOMO, another book is Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. I had to have this one so I, as a part of a swap because I haven't read this. Um, I know Eleanor Oliphant is on the spectrum, and I think maybe Gail Honeyman is as well. I, don't, I can't remember if it's on Voices or not, but I um, just love books like that, especially after reading um, The Girl He Used to Know by Tracy Carver's Grave. So I'm really hoping this is a good one. I think Christopher Books and Jams also really likes that one, and I, I trust her for the most part. <laughs> um, next is The Perfect Girl by Gilly, Gilly, Gilly I have Gilly. not read it. I um, don't know what this is about. This is a musical prodigy. She's 17, and I have read some um, of her before, and I like her, and she does thrillers, and so um, I'm really trying not to know a whole lot about this, and I'll give it a shot. I got another one by her um, called The Odd Child Out. This one is huge. Also and I read that. And I hate that, and I wish I would have known that it was Deckle Pages because I probably would have gotten it, but this
it. And this one is another historical, so I might put this on my shelf. But you guys, this rain is textured, and I am loving it. Like I'm just sitting here like this, so I'll move my hands so you can see it. But um, I didn't have to know anything about this because it's Diane Chamberlain. She is one of my all-time favorite authors, and so I grabbed this as well as the Silent Sister. And this right. one I don't think is, just, is historical, so I definitely will not be reading it this one. But I like want to read it ASAP because she's another one that I would love to read her whole backlist. Next one is this time next year by Sophie Cousins. Right. I've heard all, a lot about this this year. This is about two um, moms who are in the hospital like on New Year's Eve having their babies, and they, one wants to name it Quinn, but the other one has a baby first or whatever. And then these two, one's a boy, one's a girl, they keep meeting throughout life. And so um, I'm gonna save this for next New Year's. But I, I, again, I know Kristen from Books and Jams really like this, but I've talked to other people who didn't. Um, like I feel, I feel like this is a very mixed bag. Um, the premise sounds like something I would love, so I'm excited to try it. Next is The Broken Girls by Simone Dame. So you guys just saw it on hold. I did copy. Well, I hauled this one. Um, both were part of a bundle, and so I had to um, had to just take it. But this one, I don't know a whole lot about it except that I've heard about everybody loving this book, and so I really want to read it. I think it's about like a schoolhouse or something. I don't know. I'm not gonna say anything because I don't know anything about it, and that's how I want to go into this book is completely blind. Next, this one has been like one of my most sought after books, and I couldn't get it anywhere. But Masterclass, like oh, I read it. So this one is a dystopian book, and I've heard so many good things about this. I think it was uh, the Girl Girl Bookworm as well as Kinderless Books. Both of them really like made me want to read this immediately, and so now I finally have it. And this green is so bright and pretty. Like I don't even know if the camera's doing it justice. It is so good. So um, I'm excited to read this one. You guys, I'm getting frustrated and annoyed with myself, but I cannot wait to read this one. Next is Big Summer by Jennifer Weiner. So Jennifer Weiner right. is another one of my favorite authors. Back, um, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago or whatever, I read all of her backlist, and she's been kind of slow to publish, and so I haven't read her most recent ones. I kind of just fell off the wagon, but this one I've heard has good plus size rep. I don't really know, but regardless, I like her style a lot, and I would like to read more of her um, newer things. And so I've got this one. Next is The Lies That Bind by Emily Giffen. She's another read one that I've read the majority of her backlist, and I love them all with the exception of a couple. And so um, this is her newest, and I haven't read it. Um, I think my sister maybe didn't really like this, but I'm gonna try it. Next is Ellen Hildebrand's Beautiful Day. So again, I, totally I love Ellen Hildebrand. I'm not gonna like write her off just because I didn't like the love season. So this one, I think it's about uh, two like families or couples that come together for a wedding on Nantucket. Almost all of her books are on Nantucket and they come together for this wedding. Um, the bride's mother is passed away and she left like instructions for the wedding. And so I think things just kind of go awry. There's some secrets, some drama. I am hoping this will be like classic Ellen Hildebrand. So that is everything that I got from Facebook Marketplace. Now I've got two that were a shocking oh, find. So we went me, to I thought we were done. You guys have Menards, but it's like a Home Depot, but it's got like Home Goods as well. Um, and so we went there because they were having a sale where everything you could put inside of a bag that they gave you was 15% off. So we went because like they have like batteries and um, different like house products that I use that are cheaper there. So we went to get those, and I have I had to like browse through the book section, and so I did. So I found I owe you one by Sophie Kinsella, and this one, if you guys um, been watching me for a while, you know I was like on a hunt to find whatever book Sarah from the Bookish Knitter gave five stars and said she loved it so much. I think it was at the beginning of last year, and this was it. So I tried like always last to know by Kristen Higgins. It wasn't actually that. I tried the other Sophie Kinsella, her other new one. It wasn't that. It it was this one. And so it was five ninety seven, you guys. And then it was 15% off of that. It's a hardcover in great condition minus that sticker. I like was so shocked. I was able to find this. So um, I'm really, really excited. And I want to read this because I think it maybe has to deal with death of a parent or something. And I just know it was really important to Sarah. And so I want to read it um, just to see what, what it's about. The other one that I got there was uh, Mrs. Everything by Jennifer Weiner. So I just told you that I got Jennifer Weiner. This one is a really skinny mass market kind of paperback, but it was also $5. Um, and so I, I think I now own almost all of her backlist and I want to read this one as well. These last three are the other three that came from that mystery unboxing. So um, I'm going to keep all of these and give them a try. I'm really only excited about one of them, but the other two I can find on ebook or audiobook, so I will read them. Um, also, this first one, Major Pettigrew's Last Stand. I have heard a couple of you um, say you read this and that it was good. It's a historical, I think, maybe, I don't know, about this like older man who his brother dies and then he meets this woman and they become friends and then the friends turn into more. Looks really sweet and potentially historical. I need to look into that. Then we've got A Thousand Acres by Jane Smiley. And I think part of the reason I'm not excited for this is just this cover. It is very blech. Um, and I don't like like rural, rural stories. And this is a very, very rural story. Can you say that five times fast? My goodness. Um, but this is a King Lear retelling and sounds like something I'll give a shot. And then this is the one that I actually like feel kind of excited about. And this is The Year of Fog by Michelle Richmond. Um, the marriage pack that I just told was also by Michelle Richmond. So this one's The Year of Fog. And all it says on it is a child's disappearance is at the heart of this riveting read that follows photographer, fiance, and soon be stepmother, Abby Mason. Once the drama starts, prepare to race to the last page. And that's my Hallmark magazine. So I don't know. I have no idea what I'm in for with this one, but I am excited to give it a shot. Okay. So we've got Reunited on Dragonfly Lane um, by Annie Rains. That sounds exciting. Um, we've got A Mother's Promise by Katie Eldon, which sounds really exciting. Historical. The Fire Between High and Low by Brittany C. Cherry. That's uh, the one elements book that I have not read. The Space in Between by her. So I love her. So I, I'm excited about those. Uh, the uh, The Perfect Child or The Perfect Girl and Odd Child Out by Jilly McMillan. So we've got two Jilly McMillans, two Brittany C. Cherries, and then uh, Annie Rains and Katie Alden. So I am going to start. We'll see what I start with, but I will let you guys know. Um, I'll let you know. Hey everyone, so I finished the first book for this and it is freezing out here, but I'm stepping outside because we've got sick kids. And so it's like mass chaos in my house. Everybody's whining. If I'm there, it's like pile up on mama, but so I'm gonna be quick. Um, but I finished uh, Reunited on Dragonfly Lane by Annie Rains. This is number seven in her Sweetwater Spring series, but you don't need to read them. I, like I've never read any others and I was fine. This is about um, Chase and Sophie. Um, and they used to be um, a couple and then she had like a, a pretty bad injury where she kind of pushed everybody away. Now he, she's um, in town doing, um, she runs like a boutique and he is a vet and it's our second chance romance. And it was super cute. Um, nothing exceptional. I
yeah, I don't have like a ton to say except uh, like I like the vet romance. Um, this was cute. Like I liked she was doing like a pro bono thing that um, she was really like paying it forward. I liked both these characters. So it was good. If you're into romance, I would say for me, this is like a three, maybe three and a half star because I'm not like that into romance, but um, it was good. If you like it, definitely check it out. So there's that. Hey everyone, just a quick update. So since I filmed this intro on the 1st of January, I think, um, I'm like hitting the ground running, trying to get these done before um, the Read in the New Year readathon starts. And so I'm currently in the middle of two. I'm reading The Space in Between by Brittany C. Cherry. And this is one of her earlier books. And this one I'm reading physically. Um, I'm 58 pages in. And this is about a girl who it, uh, her fiance is killed in a crash and she's injured in said crash. Um, so it's her kind of like having to restart her life. She goes from small town somewhere to New York City and uh, starts getting in, in in a strip club she starts working in a strip club not what she wants to do not any of that but she's um doing doing what she can i guess and then it's a guy named cooper who he is famous somehow i can't remember he's a photographer i think and uh his wife is pregnant by somebody else and so he's kind of gone off the deep end and the two interact and they have um some shared history from when they were kids. Cooper is a cousin of a friend or something. And so they knew each other before. And now they re, um, re gather at this strip club. Neither of them actually went to be there. And so, um, they spend their time together just talking and it's really sweet. Um, so far I'm really enjoying this. The chapters are pretty quick. Um, I would say less than 10 pages each maybe. And the font's pretty big. This is one of her earlier books and, um, so far so good. So I'm really liking that. That's what I'm reading physically, obviously. And then I've got the perfect girl by Jillian McMillan. Now this one is really interesting and uh, 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 like ironically, there we go. Um, there's a lot of crossover between the two that I would not have expected. So this one is about a girl named Zoe and um, she's 17 and she's a musical prodigy and her family, her mom is uh, remarried and she's got a stepbrother who's right around her age as well. And the two of them are both like very, very good at playing piano. And so something happens. They have a big concert and that night her mother is killed and we don't know why. We don't know how. We don't know any of that. We also know that Zoe was a part of um, a an accident that killed somebody else in the past. And so Zoe is um, not 100% innocent because there was a lot of sketchiness around the accident that I won't talk about here. But um, so, yeah, it it is um, a lot going on. A lot going on. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I, I This has like less than ideal ratings on Goodreads. Um, it, but... I don't know. I am liking it. It's well over 400 pages, almost 500 pages. And I definitely don't think it needs to be that long. Um, and like I'm maybe two thirds of the way through and it's definitely kind of been lagging. Um, the first third, super exciting, super like thrilling, super wanting to keep turning the pages. Now it's kind of slowing down, kind of redundant. Um, so we'll see where, where we're at with the rest of this. But so far, so good. And this also has multiple perspectives, um, decently short chapters. And yeah, it's um, these are all pretty short. We get lots of different perspectives. We get um, like the investigator who's looking into this. We get her um, aunt and uncle. We get her her perspective. We maybe get her mom's at some point because um, there's lots of timelines too. Like it really doesn't feel as confusing as I'm making it sound, but there you go. So there's that. So two that I'm I'm enjoying so far and glad that I'm I'm reading them. I'm feeling really like motivated to read. So all good things. So I will let you know when I finish one of those. Hey everyone, so I'm gonna do uh, the Midwestern thing and update you about the weather. So yesterday it was like rain, snow um, combo and then it turned to like blizzardy snow and I tried to get videos of it you guys and the camera, the camera just doesn't do it justice. You can't hardly see it. Um, but it didn't accumulate because of all the rain. And then in the evening, it started accumulating. And now we have like six or seven inches and it's still coming down. And it, today's Tuesday. Um, and it's supposed to snow today, tomorrow, or no, today, the rest of the day. And then not Wednesday, Thursday. And then again, like another five inches on Friday. So 
Oh, you guys, I, I loathe this time of year. I hate it so much. I hate it so much, but my kids love it. And um, so they're outside. My big two are outside right now. Um, my husband is building them like a ramp for sledding because the streets are too bad to like go anywhere. Um, because of all that rain, we have ice and snow. And so it's too bad to drive anywhere um, to go sled. And our neighbors have a hill that they can like sled, but it sleds into the street. And so he's building like a ramp in our backyard. And um, so that's fun and better him than me. And our neighbors are going to come over and play with the kids. Um, so that is all everything that's going on. Very Midwestern of me to talk about the weather, um, but it's what's happening in this in this area. Uh, in pretty much, I think a lot of the country, it, there's a lot of snow and a lot of places kind of ramshackled ramshackled by this. So, um, yes, I look like this, and I'm almost embarrassed. Well, I am embarrassed, but it's okay. I'm putting putting this face on the internet. Um, because yesterday, our beloved babysitter, I've talked about her a lot. Uh, when we moved here, she lived on the cul-de-sac. She was a junior in high school, I think. And um, now she's in college. And so she's home for the holidays. And we've been trying to like find a time for her to babysit. Um, but either we've been sick or she's had something going on or whatever. And so yesterday, she finally she came over for an hour. And so I had so much to do, but um, it, Jeremy and I have been through the ringer with uh, sick kids and stuff. So I was like, do you just want to go grab coffee? So we did. We went to McDonald's and grabbed coffee because McDonald's and Starbucks are right next to each other. Coffee at McDonald's, PSA, any size is $1.39. You can add flavors. You can add whatever you want um, for $1.39. And so we're like, well, shoot, we'll do that. As opposed, like we pay, our total was $3 and three cents for two large coffees. And so whatever, we did that. And um, I like, by the time we came home, it was lunchtime and I just didn't, I didn't get much of it drank. Um, and so then I drank it in the afternoon and I got decaf. I got decaf coffee. I don't do caffeine at all um, just because I'm very sensitive to it. And you guys, if you're anxiety sufferers, you probably know coffee kind of just ramps it up a little bit. And um, yeah, so I don't do caffeine. And so I'm always paranoid when I go places to get coffee that it's not actually decaf. And you guys, last night... I think they punked me because I had it at like five o'clock and I only drank half of it because I was like, you know, this, this is kind of risky, um, just in case. And we watched, um, the football, the NCAA double a NCAA football championship last night. And I'm so disappointed that Michigan won, but that's a different conversation. Um, and so we stayed up late watching that, put the kids to bed cause we let them stay up too. And, um, put the kids to bed and then I was up until 11 30 and then I woke up at 3 a.m ready to roll and like my sleep from 11 30 to 3 was like not restful and I'm pretty sure it was caffeinated so um yeah there is all of that um and my neighbors just got here so I'm really distracted but um so yeah terrible sleep looking like heck I'm gonna go outside at some point, I think. Yeah, if somebody will come in and watch the baby, uh, if you can hear. But I have a lot of updates. So, four and a half minutes in, let's talk about the book. So, just a second. Just a second, Lucy. So, I finished uh, The Perfect Girl by Jillian McMillan, and I like this book. Okay. Um, this one started off super strong for me. When I updated, I said it was kind of lagging, and it did just kind of lag. And it started a lot of things and left a lot of threads um, open. And I like the, it was like they started things and did things with no real reason. Like it ended up not really going anywhere. And so um, this is definitely like a three star book for me. I didn't really love the ending. Um, it was long and it had great potential and then just fell off. So this is like I finished this and I was almost feeling a little slumpy. Um, and the next book to pick up that I wanted to pick up anyway was um, Odd Child Out by Julie McMillan. And this is the second to what she knew, um, but it's not a sequel. It just follows Jim Clemo, who's the detective. Um, the What she knew is, is the first book, and then there's this one. And so I looked at my review, and I gave it three and a half stars, what she knew. And so I was like, you know, Julie McMillan, if it's three and a half stars, three stars, um, should I even read this one? And I have it on audio. And so I was like, well, I'll give it a start and um, just see. 
if I'm not liking it, I'll be pretty quick to DNF because I, that's one of my goals this year is to DNF more. Um, but I'm a third of the way in and I'm hooked. So this is about two boys who are, just a second, who are 15 years old and best friends. One is a Somalian boy um, who is large in stature, uh, very mature looking. And then the other is um, a, a white boy named Noah, I think who's very small in stature, et cetera. The reason their appearance matters is because they're both down by like a lake, a creek, um, a river, a body of water, we'll say. And uh, the the young white boy um, gets pushed into the water, maybe. We don't know. He falls in the water. Um, an onlooker calls 911. And so now we're finding out more about uh, the boy's relationship. The... Um, the Somali boy, I forget his name. Let's see. Abdi. Abdi is um, now mute. He's not talking or doing anything. Just a second, love. Just a second. Just a second. Sorry, I've got a baby screaming at my feet. Um, so I'm going to make this quick. But he is not talking. And so um, we don't know at all what's going on. We're finding out past timelines of what happened in the past. Um, with them individually and together. And uh, right now we don't know what happened. Was this some sort of suicide pact? Was this a crime? Um, is there a third party involved? Don't know. So I'm really intrigued. Okay, I'll let you go. I got 60 pages left in the Britney C. Cherry book too because I had just turned on my light and read at three this morning. So um, hopefully I'll update soon in a little quieter area. Hey everyone, so yesterday was my favorite kind of day. It was a finish three books kind of day. So I finished all three things that we we're in the middle of. One was with my kids, but two was for this project. So yesterday was a snow day. We got lots of snow. I think I talked about it. Um, we got lots of snow. And so the kids across the street were out of school. Everybody was just enjoying the snow. So my kids were outside for probably two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon. And in the afternoon, um, I shoveled the driveway we've got like a significant driveway and so uh shoveled that and just had my audiobook in and it was awesome so i finished um odd child out by jillian mcmillian and i think i can like say as a conclusion with jillian mcmillian out of everything i've read from her she has like really good engaging beginnings and then kind of a lull in the middle and kind of a disappointing ending and this was no different i would say this is maybe three stars so like i said this is about abdi and noah they're two 15 year old best friends and um, it's a canal in Bristol, um, and they are by the canal one night, and then Noah goes into the water. We don't know how, we don't know why, any of that. So then the book is exploring both boys individually as well as their friendship to see, um, because Abdi goes missing as well as not speaking. So he's not helpful, obviously, in like saying anything um, because of guilt, because of trauma, because we don't know why. And so we're, we're trying to figure out the relationship dynamics to see kind of what he might be running from or what's going on. And so um, we get a lot of a lot of stuff going on and it gets a little slow. Um, and the end was something I saw. I like I called it from the first chapter and I really don't like that. And um, just because I expected like a bigger there was such a big buildup. I expected a bigger outcome and or not bigger even just different like something that would make me be like oh that's kind of different um and it didn't happen this book also tried to do some racism like conversation but um i really didn't like it it was talking about reverse racism as a potential motive and i just don't feel like that's a helpful conversation to start um there's also like i said uh abdi and his family are um from somalia and so there is um, some discussion of like Somalian um, hardships and things like of in, in Somalia. And it just kind of felt a little tangential and a little bit, uh, just a little bit like it, it didn't go where I wanted it to. It didn't go as far as I wanted it to, I guess. If it's going to be in there, like let's make a, let's make a point with it. And I didn't feel like it did. So overall um like three three and a half stars maybe i'm glad i read this one um but and i i might keep this on my shelf even though like i kind of felt the same about what she knew the first one following jim Clemo. and we get a little bit of the detective's personal life but you definitely don't need to read these together in order or anything like that so i'm not sure if i'll keep the the duology on my shelf or not but there's that 
And then I finished um, my physical read, which was The Space in Between by Brittany C. Cherry. This is uh, 2013, so it's one of her early works. And this one was, you could tell it was one of her early works. She's got like this writing style that really keeps the page turning, um, really lets you know your characters, and I love that. And so I was invested the whole time. It's all, also just under 300 pages, so it's not super long. Um, but this is about, let's see, what are their names? Andrea and Cooper. And they um, knew each other as kids, kind of. She, um, her brother is dating a girl named Michelle. Michelle and Cooper are cousins. They met in the summers as kids and they, whatever, there was kind of a friendship, whatever. But then now years later, um, her fiance died, is like has just died at the beginning of the book. And so she's really struggling. She goes to New York, becomes a stripper. They meet in the strip club for certain reasons. Um, he is now a, he's a famous photographer turned reality star. And they um, meet back up, have a friendship. There's, he's just um, kind of notoriously left his pregnant wife. There's more to that story too. Um, because if, if that was just, he left his pregnant wife, I would be hard pass on him. And, um, but there's more to that story that makes it, understandable, I guess. Um, and so it's their romance. There's a third act conflict that I thought was really silly. She flipped out and didn't even talk to him, which I really dislike. Um, I don't know if this would be called new adult or what, like I can't remember. They're 24, 25, something like that. So they're young, but they act like 16, 17. Multiple times I kept thinking I was reading YA. So, um, yeah, not her best work, but I enjoyed it, I guess. Uh, I love her style. And she always does some hard stuff mixed with some... Um, mixed with romance and like the the epilogue was almost kind of comical and like the last chapter so uh yeah it got a little cheesy but overall I really enjoy this book so two more books um down I would say this is maybe three and a half stars so two more books down we are all about to go to the chiropractor um Jeremy's driving because well, he's I'm waiting on him and Etta because um it's still icy and bad so we're gonna brave it to the chiropractor and then we'll see how the rest of the day goes Okay, friends, this video is getting kind of long, so I'll try not to be super chatty, but uh, I finished another book, but right now, you guys, I'm like cuddled up in my house because it is so cold. Um, it is Sunday, January 14th, and last night was the Chiefs' first wildcard playoff game, and um, they, like it was here in Kansas City, and you guys could, I'm sure if you watched the game, you saw how cold it is. Like It is currently negative 8 with a wind chill of like negative 30. It is so cold cold and like I'm gonna out ourselves for how badly we need new windows or something but like it is icing inside the windows and oh my goodness it is just it like I cannot get warm I'm so cold um but really that's what's like overwhelming us right now we're not leaving the house um today's Sunday but we're gonna do church from home and all that because it is just too cold to go out we went to my daughter's basketball game yesterday and I told her I said baby you better feel so loved because I loathe this stuff and being outside in it is not my not my jam but um it's supposed to be really cold I think until Wednesday and then it's supposed to get to like freezing and then it goes back down again so Wednesday we're gonna do all the things um but you guys I don't know about you guys but like in the summer and spring and even fall like we're about all the things my kids do all the sports all the things and in winter I just want to cancel them all I do not like like we are very stir crazy um but it's better than like venturing out with three little kids in this mess it is it is atrocious and uh it's we've got a fair amount of snow still but there's more ice it's just terrible but anyway let's talk about the book so i have finished um the fire between high and low by Brittany c cherry so um this one is a story it's number two in her element series but the only like only connection between all the element series is that they have an element in the title otherwise stories characters they have very very little if any crossover i don't think there's any crossover this is about logan and Alyssa. i think are their names i don't know um they meet one one day in a oh my goodness in a grocery store. She is a, a clerk or whatever, and he's trying to buy groceries and um, finds out like his credit card's maxed out or whatever. He and he takes care of his mom, 
And so she kind of overhears the situation and, like, steps in and kind of buys his groceries for him. The two strike up a friendship. They find out that his half-brother is dating her sister, so they're connected in that way, too. And other than that, they don't really have anything in common except that they have very broken families. Um, So he has a mother who is a drug abuser and um, dad's her dealer and kind of, like, not in the picture except for being her, her dealer. Um, And she has a mother who is very verbally abusive and compares her a lot to her sister and how she does not, um, does not stack up to what her sister is. And so they kind of bond together over that brokenness, um, but they're very, very, very different. She is uh, like a churchgoer, goody two-shoes kind of like trope, whereas he's this bad boy, uh, all the things. Um, He, she, he's into music. She's into art, I think. Maybe the, no, he's into cooking. She's into music. I don't remember. I remember they both had like an art um, that they were into. But anyway, so um, yeah, it's their romance. And I thought this one was a little bit angsty, a little bit. Um, there is something that happens halfway through, uh, like as Brittany C. Cherry has done many, many times before. Halfway through, there's a big, okay, that's what we're doing. And so that definitely happens here. And I like... Um, I like the depth that it adds. I'm being kind of vague here. I like the depth that it adds. Um, but this one just wasn't my favorite. I would say it's still three and a half stars. Still really like it. If you're a huge romance reader, you might like it even more than I did. Um, but I'm definitely going to keep it on my shelves because, check this out, signed to me. Um, and I just love these books. And I love her writing style regardless. So, yeah, I read this one um, m- mostly physically, some on audio or some on ebook. Um but yeah, really like this one. So now I'm about halfway through the final one, which is A Mother's Promise by Katie Alden. So this one is historical. It's 1927. Um, and it deals with the topic of eugenics. So if that's something you'd like to read, um, I mean, it's not like a pleasant subject, but I think it's a fascinating one. So I actually do kind of like that tro- that trope, that topic. Um, but so if that's something you like to read, maybe check this out. Uh, definitely similar to Hold My Hand by... Um, Dolan's Perkins Perkins Valdez um, that I read earlier this year, but different concept. So um, this one is about, let's see, what is it called? It is the, um, goodness, I want to, I want to say it right. Um, Let's see, the Virginia State Colony for Epileptics and Feeble-Minded. So she's in this um, center called uh, the Virginia State Colony. What did I say? Virginia State Colony for Epileptics and Feeble-Minded. Her and her mother are both there. Her mother is, um, I I, like, I think she has a drug issue, um, whatever. She's just really having mental health issues as well. She's also classified as feeble-minded. Our main character is Ruth Ann Riley, and she has had a baby out of wedlock. And um, so she is there because of that. And so they are um, doing a sterilization action for all of these feeble-minded folk. And um, they took her baby from her. So she does not have her baby, but she does know where her baby is. Um, We know more about, like, the conception story. We know more about Ruth Ann. Um, And it's... It's really interesting. It's not as fast-paced as I would kind of want. Um, but we're finding out more about Ruth Ann's family and uh, just kind of what she is trying to do um, in the face of this sterilization act because the doctor has said, like, she's next and she doesn't want to be next because she's not feeble-minded. She knows very much what's going on. Um, so it's it's interesting so far. Not, like I said, not um, the most fast-paced, but interesting. So I'm hoping to finish that today or tomorrow. Um, we'll see. Today starts the read in the new year, read in the new year readathon. And so I don't want to, um, like I want to get that done so I can move on. So hopefully we'll finish it today and I will update and let you know my final thoughts. Hey everyone. So it is Martin Luther King Jr. Day and we are, um, doing some Martin Luther King school, but I thought I would get on real quick and let you know that I did finish this book last night. So, um, this book was fascinating in its topic. So this book is about, um, eugenics and sterilization movement that actually happened in Virginia, um, in 1927. And this went to a Supreme Court court case that, um, is still not overturned in 2024 still not overturned in which it says uh basically that forced sterilization is okay in some circumstances 
that is mind boggling to me and like just terrifying. And this book specifically is around, it's Buck versus Bell is the name of the um, Supreme Court case. It's around that, but it's definitely got a lot of liberties. And honestly, the author's note in the end of this was so good that I wish you would have put it at the beginning because it was talking more about like the, the things that were true and the things that weren't. Um, so this book, like I said, is about Ruth Ann, and she, um, the doctor at the institute that she is at, um, says, hey, I'm going to basically tie your tubes, and she's not for that. She, her baby has been taken from her and is being raised by the family of the man that raped her, and um, just lots of injustice. She is not feeble-minded, as they call her. And, um, so she's not only trying to see her baby, but she's trying to fight, um, be, from, from being sterilized for no reason. And so she gets a pro bono lawyer and, um, they fight and there's a court case, but I really wish we would have actually gotten more of that because the resolution is pretty quick and almost like, Hey, if you're not paying attention to those couple pages, you're going to miss it. And I didn't like that. And like, this is, I think her debut. Katie Alden is a, um, pseudonym for somebody else. I don't know who she is or if she's, um, if she's an author in other ways, but I think this is her for sure debut historical debut as Katie Eldon. I, I think, I don't know. Um, anyway, so her story itself felt like a debut. You know, there was a little bit of emotional um, disconnection and, you know, there's a little, but like it got you thinking about the whole topic in general and the things that are real. Um, this book definitely ties up in a pretty bow uh, for a topic that was not actually tied up in a pretty bow. So if you want that, great. Um, it was I, I'm glad it did that way because it was a harrowing enough topic. But anyway, so that is that. So I read everything from my January TBR, which is awesome. Um, I think I'm going to keep them all on my shelves. And I generally enjoyed myself the entire time, which is great um, because I, I mean, that's why I'm buying books, right? Is because I'm going to enjoy them. So I'm glad I read them. Glad I am not letting them sit there anymore because they're all still good. So uh, yeah, we're going to go do a little more. Speaking of harrowing things, we're going to go do a little more Martin Luther King stuff and uh, maybe do a quick workout because we are stuck inside. It's still negative a million degrees. So, um, okay, well, I'm going to go, but thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.